Hi, this is JP from Nautilus of Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus. And this time it will be a bit longer Hero Pack Focus. We are delving into the Deadpool Hero Pack that just was released for our Champions the card game. And uh, the reason this is a longer one is that there are a lot of more cards in this Hero Pack because we get a brand new aspect for the game, the pool aspect, and there are a bunch of cards to go through. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and without any delay, we have a lot of cards to go through. Let's get started with the Deadpool signature set. So first off, of course, we have the man himself, Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool. On the Alter Ego side, we have Wade Wilson, a whopping 8 recovery, uh, mercenary and mutant traded, mutant with an asterisk. Sometimes I, I'm a mutant, sometimes I'm not. Depends on who you ask, says the flavor text. Okay, and uh, breaking the fourth wall action, discard a card from your hand, search your deck for a Deadpool event and add it to your hand and hit once per round. The hand size is 6 and there are 9 hit points. Then on the hero side we have of course Deadpool, 200 attack, uh, thwart, 200 attack and 100 defense. Oh and ignore those zeros, so 2 uh, thwart, 2 attack and 1 defense. And Deadpool, corpse and axe force traded, the regenerating degenerate Post interrupt when you would be defeated. Instead, set your hit point dial to 1, change to alter ego form, and add one alt acceleration token to the main scheme. And uh, hand size is 5 and 9 hit points. So basically, uh, you can only lose by threatening off. So you can't be uh, sucker punched to death. It only adds an acceleration token, but of course uh, it might cause you to thread out faster and faster. So it is <laughs> a slippery slope you know, when you get those acceleration tokens in play, but that's Deadpool. Okay, next we'll start looking at the signature cards. First off, of course, we have uh, Deadpool's uh, best bud, Cable, uh, three Cost ally with one sword with an asterisk and one atta uh, two attack with an asterisk. A psionic and axe force traded, three hit points. A cable gets plus one sword and plus one attack for each acceleration token on the main scheme to a maximum of plus three sword and plus three attack. And cable can be committed as a wild resource. So uh, you want acceleration tokens? Maybe. Okay. Next we have exhausting. Exhausting Personality, a zero cost event, hero action choose, place one acceleration token on the main scheme, stun and confuse the villain, or exhaust a player a player's identity, that player draws one card for each acceleration token on the main scheme, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay. Next uh, we have our quite familiar art, uh, this was in uh, Captain America's art, but now it's Deadpool uh, diving to the knives. Uh, it, it, there are two copies of this event, so maximum effort is a zero cost event. Attack traded, hero action attack. Take any amount of damage up to your remaining hit points. Deal an equal amount of damage to an enemy, and this can be committed as a physical resource. And next, we have uh, meta knowledge. Uh, it, there's only one copy of this, so Meta Knowledge is a one cost event, Hero Interrupt, when an encounter card is revealed, cancel all of its effects and discard it, take one damage for each icon, uh, boost uh, trigger or bro boost uh, icon uh, in that card's boost area, and it can be committed as a mental resource. Okay. Then we have Yuhu. There are two copies of this event. So Yuhu is a one cost event. For traded hero action for take any amount of damage up to your remaining hit points. 
remove an equal amount of threat from a scheme and this can be committed as an energy resource. Next we have montage. It is a resource card. Uh, so montage uh, reads this card generates one additional uh, wild resource for each acceleration token on main scheme up to a maximum of three additional resources. So uh, it could be a four resource card depending on how many acceleration tokens there are. So quite interesting. Then we have Chimichanga truck. It is a two-cost support, location traded, response after an identity, makes a basic recovery, exhaust chimichanga truck, ready that identity. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So basically, if you get defeated, you have this in play, you go to other ego, and you can make a recovery there to full health, and just ready and go back and start hitting. So that's really, really powerful. Next, we have Arm to the Thief, and it is a two-cost upgrade response after you play Arm to the Thief. Uh, search your collection for one weapon upgrade from any aspect and attach it face down here. And ac action Exhaust Arm to the Thief, uh, swap the card attached here with a weapon upgrade you control. And this can be committed as an energy resource. So, okay, with this card you need to have all of your weapon upgrades. Uh, as a side deck when you are playing, just so you don't have to go through all of your cards in the middle of the game just to find the perfect weapon. So keep that in mind when you are playing with Deadpool. Uh, then we have Deadpool's Katana. So it is a tool cost upgrade weapon trade with restricted. Near action attack, exhaust Deadpool's Katana and take one damage, deal two damage to an enemy. This attack gains piercing. Okay. And there are uh, two copies, of course, in the deck, and you can commit it as a cigar resource. Next, we have it ain't over, and it is a one cost uh, upgrade, only one in the deck. Uh, condition attached to the main scheme, increased target value of attached scheme by two for each acceleration token on it. And this can be committed as uh, energy resource. So, with all those. Uh, acceleration tokens, you can just uh, ignore them a bit longer with this, so really interesting. Lastly, we have two copies of this card is fire in the deck. Uh, the art is amazing. Uh, three cost events, attack, trade, and fourth response. After you turn ends, if this card is in your hand, take one damage. And uh, hero action, attack, deal X damage to an enemy. X is the amount of damage you have sustained. So uh, remember that after your turn ends, uh, you get to refresh your hand. So if you didn't play this and it was in your hand at the start of your turn, or you get it to during your turn, then it will deal one damage. But not if you draw to it onto it. Okay, I at least I think that's the timing. Then uh, we start looking through the pre-built decks uh, pool aspect cards. There are a lot. So first off, we have Dog Pool. Dog Pool is a three-cost ally with zero thwart, one attack, dead pool corpse traded, four hit points, retaliate one, and toughness. When defeated, deal 1 damage to an enemy. Uh, this has an acceleration icon on it and can be committed as a physical resource. Next, uh, I'm going a bit fast because otherwise we are here all night. Uh, so we have head pool, 3 cost ally with 2 thwart and 1 attack with an asterisk. Uh, dead pool corpse traded and zombie traded, 1 hit point only. And uh, the asterisk is response after dead head pool attacks and damages a minion that minions attacks that minion attacks another enemy of your choice and this has a plus boost icon symbol on it and this can be committed as a physical resource then we have kit pool uh, kit pool is a three cost ally with one fort and two attack with an asterisk and dead pool cost trade at two hit points kit pool's attacks gain piercing and kit pool has an acceleration icon 
and uh, git pool can be committed as a physical resource. Next, we have Lady Deadpool. So Lady Deadpool is a four cost ally with two force and two attack. Deadpool costs straight at three hit points. When defeated, defeat a non-elite minion, and this can be committed as a physical resource. Then we have a ode to Monty Python's The Holy Grail, barely a scratch. Two copies, uh, I mean, three copies of this. So, barely a scratch is a, three co a zero cost event, defense straight at hero interrupt, defense. When you would take any amount of damage from an attack, prevent one of that damage for each um, of these icons uh, in play. So, if you have all of these icons in play, you can uh, prevent four damage. Okay. Next, we have a cut upper. So, cut upper is a three cost event, uh, and it is an attack traded hero action attack, deal five damage to an enemy, stun that enemy, squeak, and max one per deck. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Next we have the bomb. Uh, this is a six cost event, max one per deck. Hero action deal ten damage to a villain. Uh, to the villain deal one damage uh, to each enemy and hero for each of these icons in play. Okay, so it basically nukes the whole board. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So a great finisher you might just knock yourself out with it, but of course Deadpool just uh, heals back to, up to one, so no worries. Uh, next we have Get Ragey. It is a zero cost event. Action, ready an ally. That ally gets plus one attack until the end of the phase and uh, max one per deck. And this can be committed as a physical resource. And uh, next we have I got this, and there are three copies of this. So I got this is a one cost event hero action. In the following, if the following icons are in uh, are on one or more cards in play, uh, either deal three damage to an enemy, uh, remove two threat from a scheme, or ready an ally you control or draw one card. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Next, another one per deck card. So not my responsibility. Uh, zero event, zero cost event uh, interrupt. Not a hero interrupt, but interrupt. So you can play this from your alter ego. When an any when any amount of threat would be placed on a scheme, uh, you or your ally takes it as damage instead. <laughs> so that's really powerful. And of course, max one per deck. Next, we have pool inspection. So, pool inspection is a six cost event, thwart, max one per deck, hero, action, thwart, remove five threat from the main scheme, ignoring the crisis icon, remove one threat from each scheme for each, well, uh, of each of these icons in play, and this can be committed as a mental resource. So, this is basically a nuke for the schemes, like the, the, the bomb was for enemies and heroes, and minions. Next we have Live Dangerously. So Live Dangerously is a hero or a player side scheme. Zero costed, victory zero. Each identity gets plus two hand size and it has all of the, these icons. So that's nasty. And it comes into play with uh, three threat per player. And it can be committed as a uh, energy resource. Then we have a suite of he um, resource cards. First, self-confidence resource. Uh, max one per deck. Double the number of resources this card generates. If your identity has sustained less than five damage, triple the resources instead if you have sustained no damage. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Next, we have self-control. Self-control is a 
a resource card, max one per deck, double the number of resources this card generates if your identity has sustained less than five damage, triple the resources instead if you have sustained no damage, and this can be committed as a mental resource, or up to three. And lastly we have self-preservation, it is a resource card, max one per deck, double the number of resources this card generates, if your identity has sustained less than 5 damage, triple the resources instead if you have sustained no damage, and this can be committed as an energy resource. Then we have Git Good. Uh, Git Good is a 2 cost upgrade. Reduce the cost to play Git Good by 2 if you did not win your previous game of Marvel Champions. Post interrupt when a player would be defeated, they set their hit point. Uh, dial to 1 and change to alter ego form instead. Remove this card from the game and it can be committed as a mental resource. Next we have healing factor. There are three copies of this. Uh, healing factor is a 3 cost upgrade, uh, max 1 per player, super power traded. Uh, response after the player phase begins, exhaust healing factor, heal 2 damage from your identity. And it <clears throat> it can be committed as an uh, energy resource. And the last pool card in the pre-built uh, deck is Stick to Itiveness. And it is a two cost upgrade, condition hero action, spend a physical resource and exhaust this card, ready your uh, hero. And max one per deck. And it can be committed as an energy resource. That's way better than the original. And lastly, we have one basic card, which is Frenemies, because why not? Because we have Cable and Deadpool in the deck. So it is a one cost event for traded team up Cable and Deadpool, max one per deck. Hero action, toward deal one damage to each. Uh, one damage each to Cable and Deadpool. Remove 3 threat from a scheme and 3 threat from a different scheme. And it can be committed as a wild resource. So uh, that is the whole pre built deck. Uh, we still need to look at the obligation and the nemesis set. And we also have the dreadful set, which will be in a, uh, play if you are using the pool aspect. But first, uh, we look at the obligation. So, the Merc with the Mouth. Give to the Wade Wilson player. Exhaust each ally you control. Allies you control cannot ready. Other players cannot resolve uh, player card abilities during your turn. Forced response. After the player phase ends, if you have not talked this phase, discard this card. So... Uh, will be interesting if I draw this when I'm filming my playthrough with Deadpool. I, I probably will just not talk and play to get rid of this. Okay, and it has two uh, boost icons. Then we have the Nemesis set. So Deadpool's Nemesis set starts with the Butler. Um, uh, butler is a minion. Uh, scheme of two, one attack. Scientist traded and three hit points, and the scheming has an asterisk. Forced interrupt when Butler schemes, place that threat on in the voluntary procedures if able. And boost ability, you are confused. And it has boost ability icon. Then we have involuntary procedures, which is a side scheme. Uh, so, forced response. After Deadpool takes any amount of damage, place one threat here. Then, if there is 10 or more threats here, remove this card from the game. And this can be, uh, or this has three boost icons and a plus one encounter card icon, and comes into play with six threat on it. Then we have Tabula Rasa, 16. It is an attachment. Attach to your identity. Treat your identity. This printed text box is as blank, except for trades. Alter ego action. Spend two mental resources. Discard this card. So with this, uh, Deadpool can actually die if defeated. Okay. 
and it has a boost ability which is attached tabula rasa to your identity. Next we have, or lastly in the Nemesis set, we have two mutated soldiers. A mutated soldier is a minion with one scheme and two attack and mutate and soldier traded five hit points. Uh, toughness and force response after mutated soldier activates heal all damage from it. And it has two boost icons. Okay, so then as I am uh, understand I'm just double checking from the insert. So bring let's read it because it's much simpler to explain by reading it. So using the pool aspect. The pool aspect comes as an aspect for all gameplay purposes. You can customize any hero's deck using the pool aspect as your chosen aspect following the deck customization rules found in as Appendix 1 of the rules reference. Uh, bringing dead pools from across the universe into battle is a killer proposition when setting up a game in which at least one player is using the pool aspect, shuffle one copy of Crisis of Infinite Dead Pools, treasury card into the encounter deck, uh, set the rest of the Dread Pool modular encounter set aside. This encounter set is shuffled into the encounter deck when Crisis of Infinite Infinite Dead Pools is revealed. Okay, yeah, there's the answer. So this is basically same as Shadows of the Past, but for the Dread Pool set. So, Crisis of Infinite Dread Pools. Treachery, when revealed, uh, reveal the set aside Dread Pool minion and Dread Pool deeds side scheme. Shuffle the rest of the set aside Dread Pool, uh, Dread Pool encounter set into the encounter deck. Remove this card from the game. And uh, this has two boost icons. So, uh, you get only that effect once if you hit it. Then uh, we have Dreadpool, and Dreadpool is a minion with two skims and two attack, uh, assassin and elite traded, and three hit points. Dreadpool engages the first player. When defeated, de deal Dreadpool to the player who defeated him as a face down encounter card. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't go away. <laughs> okay, and three boost icons. So that's nasty. So there's a prize to playing the pool aspect, apparently. Uh, dreadful Deeds, side scheme. Uh, when revealed, place two threat here for each player who controls one or more pool pink cards. And it has a plus boost icon icon. And comes into play with two threat on it and three boost icons. Next we have Anti-Regeneration anti, uh, Ray, and this is a weapon uh, traded attachment attached to Dreadpool, otherwise attached to the villain, forced to interrupt when attached character attacks, an, attacks a non-villain character, treat the attacked character's text box as if it were blank, exact for traits until the end of the attack, here action spent uh, one of each resources and attach this card to your identity. Okay. And you get plus one attack with this. Oh, that's nice. You get, you can um, get that to your identity. Uh, next we have pool, uh, poolized, and there are two copies of this attachment. Treat attached ally as a pool minion with a blank text box. Attached minion's scheme is equal to its printed board and it does not take consequential damage. When you reveal attached to the ally with the highest cost without poolized attached, otherwise this card gains surge. And it has two boost icons, so it makes your allies enemies or minions, which you need to defeat. And lastly, we have meta. Metacidal, tenden meta metacidal tendencies. So it is a treachery. When revealed, deal, deal two damage to each Deadpool corpse character. Three damage instead if Dreadpool is in play. If no damage was dealt this way, place one acceleration token on the main scheme. And this has two boost icons. Okay. So uh, when playing with the pool aspect, you need to have those cards in play also. Or at least the one card that brings those cards. But um, we are already ru running quite long. 
but we're not done yet. We still have uh, this many full cards to go through, so let's get going. So these are additional pool cards, not in the pre-built deck, so you can uh, have uh, some deck building possibilities when uh, making uh, pool aspect decks. First off, we have Bob, Agent of Hydra. Bob, Agent of Hydra is a 2 cost ally with 1 thwart, uh, one thwart and 1 attack. Hydra traded 2 hit points. Uh, response after Bob, Agent of Hydra enters play, deal 2 damage to an enemy or remove 1 threat from a scheme and this has some acceleration icon and can be committed as a physical resource. Then uh, you recognize this lady from the Deadpool movie, so Negasonic Teenage Warhead and uh, like the two panels in which she was in a one commit that one time. Uh, so Four cost ally with two thwart and two attack. Cyanic and axe was traded. Four hit points. Interrupt when a treachery is revealed. Deal two damage to Nagasonic teenage warhead. Cancel that treacheries when revealed effects. And comes into play with a plus encounter card icon and can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have Panda Pool. Uh, Panda Pool is a four cost ally with zero thwart, three attack. Dead Pool Corpse traded and 4 hit points. Comes into play with toughness and, and pl plus 1 encounter card icon and can be committed as a physical resource. Then we have a really stupid card in my opinion, break time. So it costs, uh, costs 3 per player and it is an event traded uh, alliance, max 1 per deck, so alliance means that all the players can pay for this card. So alter ego action, take a group break, leave the table, <coughs> read a comic book, uh, when you come back to the game heal one damage from each identity for every minute you were away from the game, and this can be committed as a energy resource. So basically, when I'm, if I'm using this card ever, I'm just saying that, okay, well, I was away from the table for X minutes and healed X damage and won't uh, take the break in real life. Then we get have a get in front of me, and it is a one cost event, hero interrupt. When a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel its when revealed effects, the villain attacks you instead. If an ally or another he hero defends this attack, uh, draw one card <coughs> and one, max one per deck and can be committed as a mental resource. Next uh, we have Mulligan. There are three copies of this. So Mulligan is a three cost event. You cannot play this card if you have played an, another card this phase. Action, discard your hand, draw a new hand, draw up to your hand size and it can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, well, yeah, if you draw bad cards, you can mulligan in in middle of the game, which is funny. Uh, then we have Deadpool Corpse Ship. It is a one cost to port, vehicle traded action, exhaust Deadpool Corpse Ship and deal one uh, deal, deal yourself one face down and counter card. Put a pool ally into play from your hand, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Next, plot convenience. It is a two cost to port action. Uh, exhaust plot convenience. Choose attach one aspect card from your hand face down here to a maximum of three. Add one card attach face down here to your hand, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay. Next we have Ambush, and it is, there are three copies of this. Uh, ambush is a one cost upgrade, tactic traded, attached to a side scheme, max one per side scheme. Uh, interrupt, when attached side scheme is defeated, discard a non-elite minion, and this has a crisis icon on it. Okay, and it can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have Bazooka, there are two copies of this, so bas baku uh, 
Bazooka is a 2 cost upgrade, weapon traded, rest 3 cred, uh, max, one, uh, max 2 per deck. Your action attack, discard Bazooka, deal 1 damage to an enemy for each of these icons in play. This attack gains ranged and this can be committed as a energy resource. Next uh, we have Blackout. Uh, it is a zero cost upgrade, meta game traded. Your action, spend one resource of any type, move one threat from a scheme to an empty space above that matches the spent resource. If all spaces above are filled, discard, discard, and confuse the villain. <laughs> okay, uh, so basically, you put tokens on this, and when it's filled, it gets it's it gets discarded and uh, you confuse the villain and it can be committed as a energy resource then we have distraction there are three copies of this so it is a zero cost upgrade attached to a non elite minion max one per minion attached minion cannot activate and this has a crisis icon on it and can be committed as a physical resource then we have laser swords, and that guy looks quite a lot like Vader, but it's not. So, uh, three cost upgrade, weapon traded, uh, counts as two restricted cards, max one per deck. Your hero gets plus one attack for each of these symbols in play to a maximum of four plus four attack, and this can be committed as an energy resource. Okay, that's quite interesting. Then uh, we have Rock, Paper, Scissors. So, one cost upgrade metagame. Here, action, exhaust this card, choose one card in your hand and, and, and discard the top card of your deck using the diagram above. If a printed resource on the chosen card beats points to a printed resource on the discarded card, add the discarded card to your hand. And this can be committed as a wild resource. So basically, if you reveal a mental resource and you reveal on, from the top of your deck a physical resource, you get that card. And with physical, you get an energy card. And with energy, you get a mental card. And if you revealed a wild card from your hand, you get whatever you draw except the wild card and vice versa okay and yeah that's really confused second to last tic-tac-toe it is a zero cost upgrade metagame traded hero action spend one resource of any type move one damage from a character to an empty space above matching the spent resource if th there are three damage tokens in line in a line Deal all damage on this card to an enemy and discard this card. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay. Uh, yeah. Last card. War. Uh, war is a one cost upgrade meta game. Traded hero action exhaust war. Discard the top card of the encounter deck. Take one damage for each uh, icon. In the boost area of that card, discard the top card of your deck, deal damage to an enemy equal to that card's cost. And this card can be committed as a physical resource. So, those were all the cards that come in Deadpool's Hero Pack. A lot to go through and a lot to wrap my head around. But I will be leaving the pre-built deck, trying it out before I'll... Uh, jump into the other pool cards but yeah there are a lot uh, to consider when playing Deadpool for the first time it is a really interesting ally and one of my favorite uh, characters from the Marvel Universe of course a uh, real fan favorite for sure so uh, yeah uh, this is running quite long so let's wrap this here so hope this hero pack focus was useful to you when deciding if you want to add um, deadpool and the pool aspect to your game of marvel champions the card game 
Hope you guys like this hero of focus. Thanks for watching and until next time.